It was a tough job, but we finally have Morello where we want him. Now one last step remains, eliminate him. In his sections of the city, there's theft, robbery, blackmail, illegal lotteries, gaming rooms and whorehouses appearing all the time. But what's the biggest problem? Drugs? Horseshit. The problem is that we don't get a cent out of it. That'll change as soon as we get rid of Morello. His organization will collapse, and all those small-time cheats, thieves, and criminals will kill each other without anybody over there to maintain order. Today, we can finally remove that bastard once and for all. Paulie has come up with a plan. That's right. What my informants tell me, we have one chance to get this guy. Merlo watches his back and almost never shows himself in public. He goes everywhere in his bulletproof limo, clammed up like some seashell. But today he's coming out. He's going to theater to do some socializing with the creme de la creme of Lost Heaven. And we'll be there to show him something too. Isn't this a bit risky? It's risky, but this is our only opportunity to waste him in public and show everyone our power. We'll do it like this. Wait in front of the building till the end of the show. People will start coming out, so there'll be a lot of confusion. With Morello trying to make his way out, his gorillas won't have much of a chance to notice us before we hit him. Make sure you don't draw any attention to yourselves, so no shooting. Pull your weapons when you see him. I hope I still recognize him. Shouldn't be hard. Well likes to wear his white suits. Not many people wear them these days. Each of you get a Thompson or Lupara from Vincenzo. Wait out in front of the theater on Central Island until Morello comes out. Then go to it. The performance ends at 9 o'clock, so make sure you're there on time. It should work out fine, so don't come back without his head. Okay, boss. Let's get to it. Vincenzo, today we need some real heavy artillery. We're gonna rub out Morello. Well, I think 600 shots per minute from an old Tommy gun should do the trick. At the same time, we could stick to the ancient ways and use a more traditional Sicilian weapon for a job of this size. What do, do you need?
damn show must... That silver limousine! Catch him! Think he's dead? Well, I guess so, yeah. 
Oh, Christ. Well, he's definitely dead now. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Shoot them! Come on, you heap of chunk! Hold on! Sam, shoot! Bastards! Kill him, Sam! Damn it, Polly. Wow. Yes! Yes! How did you fix the car? Better ask Sam. Why ain't you a mechanic, Sam? That works too dirty for me.
Hey, Tommy. Hey, you got anything for me today? Well, today was uh, a little rough. How come? Ah, uh, you know, the guys left the car here that was involved in a chase with the cops, and uh, I kind of need to get it out of here fast. Why didn't they dump it themselves? Oh, uh, well, we had a deal worked out with them, but uh, it was meant to be a sure thing, and it didn't work out. They were a little pissed, so they left it here. What's in it for me? A lovely German sports car. That's worth the risk. I'll do it. What can I do? Eh, it's pretty simple. Take the car to the cliffs outside of town and dump it in the sea. Cool. But if the coppers spot you, there'll be trouble, so you gotta shake them. Okay.
stole I have my a car. Wife and children, don't do it. Okay, where's the car? That guy came in for it a while ago and drove off. But he said he was going for dinner at Roy's Grill. It's downtown, it's just a little way from Pepe's restaurant. Hey, if you hurry, you'll still find a car there. What's going on, today's customer appreciation day? This one's an exception. He owes me big time. I did a bunch of jobs for him and I haven't seen dollar one. God knows what he does, but at the same time, he acts like a classy guy. Now, this way, he pays his debts and I pay my debt to you. You better get going. Right. Thanks.
So, you killed Morello. That must have felt good, huh? We celebrated. Salieri was thrilled, of course. We ran the whole town, practically. And there seemed to be an end to the bloodshed. For a while, I felt like a king. Until I came to a realization. If a regular guy like me could kill the most powerful man in the city, what good was all his power? Hell, if he hadn't been so powerful, he'd probably still be alive. It seemed to me that, no matter how strong someone was, there was always somebody stronger to take them out. So where did that intuitive thought take you? Greediness is bullshit. When you have no money, you think that a few bucks a month will be enough. Then you realize that it wouldn't be bad to have a nice car. You'd get a great job in some high up position, but in actuality, you're thinking about going higher. Before you know it, you want to be the President of the United States and you want to win the war against the Germans. Luckily, that won't happen. Plus, the whole strategy of watching other people's backs has one basic flaw. The whole time you have to watch your own back in case someone else has the same idea. So I thought to myself that maybe I ought to change my priorities a little. Great Bible story. <laughs> Laugh it up. You know where it got me in the end. This. Who is it? It's from 1920. The old man is Don Pepone. The two younger ones are Salieri and Morello. This photo convinced me that this kind of life is poisonous. Morello and Salieri were friends, and they were both commanders of Pepone's regime. But in the 1920s, they got Don Pepone killed because of some deal. Strangely enough, Salieri still admires the guy now. Afterward, they divided up the city, and each ruled their own part of it. But they started to compete with each other. I ended up being Salieri's instrument of death to kill his best friend, to save him from looking Morello in the eye. It occurred to me that my friends and the people I loved were the same. Someday I'd turn to Polly and be looking straight down the barrel of a gun. I couldn't be sure of anybody, above or below me. But you were risking your life every day. Being a sharpshooter for the Mafia ain't no better roses the way you tell it. It's different when you're living it. When you're full of energy and you're fighting for your life with someone who's like your brother. You're just two soldiers who know what needs to be done. And it all depends on your ability to survive. It's a war. The constant feeling that you can't even trust your best friend is terrible. You are alone, and death can come from anywhere. I'd lie awake at night wondering if the joke my best friend told me was really just a joke, or if I should get prepared for my own execution. A person needs someone he can trust. <laughs>